Hey everybody, this is Steve from Conductive Labs and in this video what we're going to have a look at is the new interval mode on the Noodler. It's a little side feature, a little bit like the rotator, where basically it takes input from a keyboard controller and smurfs it a little bit and creates um, a new experience. Um, this one um, plays intervals when you touch the keys as opposed to actually the notes that you play. It's pretty cool. Um, how you get to it is you go over to the Noodler and hit Shift Menu, and then you hit the encoder 3, and you can see up there it says Interval Notes, and it gives you a little bit of instructions on how to use it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Right now it's set to On. If you want to turn it off, you hold the Shift button and press it down, and now it's off. You can toggle that. And across the bottom, it shows um, some values there, and I'll talk about what those are in a minute. Um, so that's how you get into the rotator, I'm sorry, <laughs> the um, interval algorithm mode. Okay, so what does it do? Let's see, if I hit this D key, it's gonna play a, a note, and what that note is, is it's the note of the, um, the key of the noodler. So right now, it's in the key of C, so it's gonna play a C note. And you might be saying, why is it playing a C note when I'm hitting the D key? Well, that's just the way we chose to map the keyboard to play the intervals. And there's a reason that I'll get to uh, in a little while. So hit this key, that's your root note. You hit one on either side, it'll s uh, set an interval to go up or down. Um, if you move out one more key, it jumps two scale steps up or two scale steps down. Uh, another key out goes three scale steps. Uh, and then the, the next key out goes four, four, one, two, three, yes. And then by fives. And you hear it's rotating, it, it, it's wrapping. So what's going on, why is it wrapping around? Well, that's just how the the interval algorithm is implemented, and you could change the ends. So the white keys change the intervals, and the black keys actually do other things, like for instance, change the boundary of what the lower note is and what the upper note is for wrapping. The um, lower note is changed by these two keys, so if I, let's do this. So if I hit this key a bunch of times, it's gonna make the lower note move up. If I hit this key, it'll make it go down. Okay, so we'll leave it there. Now these two keys do the opposite. These two keys, and I'll use this one. So if I wanted to lower that top note where it wraps, I will use this note, this key on the keyboard. So I can close that in or I can open it up. So I'll close it in a little bit. Okay, I like that. So we'll leave it like that. So again, these two for lowering the wrap note, these two for raising the wrap note. Okay, this, this button right here turns on whether or not the center note is following the um, chord degree of the noodler. So if I hit it now, it's C, because we're in the key of C on the noodler, and we're at chord degree 1. If I change it to chord degree 4, now it should be an F. Am I right? Yeah, it is. Okay. So what's cool about that is if you have that turned on and you're also playing the noodler at the same time, the um, the intervals will be relative to the um, the root note of the chord degree on the noodler. So we'll just leave it on C for now. Okay, um, that was this button that turns that on and off. Okay, the other buttons up here, these two will change your octave of what the root note is. So we'll leave that there. And that leaves these three keys. So this one is my favorite because what it does is it's a little bit like the white keys, but it's a randomizer. So just play a random interval. 
This one repeats the last note. So let's move it up a little bit. So if I go... So this one's moving it up a step, and this one is, or I should say, a, a, a chord note, and this one is repeating it. Uh, what this one does, that just brings us back to home, um, and this brings us back to home, but doesn't play a note. So if I go, if I go, so it brings us, it's kind of hard to demonstrate, but this brings us back home just like this, but it doesn't play the note. Okay, so what's fun about this is, and what you're hearing is, um, it's velocity sensitive as well. And if I play the notes too fast, they'll step on each other and maybe turn each other off. So. so what's neat is when you do this. Now, in the keys of, in the hands of somebody that knows how to play keys, this thing is phenomenal. Which brings me to um, this concept comes from an old thing called um, note rows, um, and uh, this is like a classical music stuff. And then there was also um, some, uh, I can't remember, but there, there's a via Wikipedia this, there's a ton of information on it. But where I fought, first saw it was a demonstration by a guy named uh, Tyler who worked for Eventide, and they have a really cool device called the Misha. And the Misha device does this kind of thing, but it does it like 10 times more stuff. Um, and uh, so we wanted to implement just this idea of the intervals as a side thing on the noodler, but um, the full on um, the full on meal deal is 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 in the, the Eventide Misha. <clears throat> I also saw a gentleman named Steve. I can't remember his last name. He was at the NAB show last year, and he was using the Misha. And man, that guy is clearly a piano player. And he was playing it like a professional piano player would play a normal keyboard, but he was using these intervals and the chops that you could do when you're when you get really good at using this is unbelievable. I can't do it, but certainly people who play keyboards can do fantastic things with this. Um, so because I don't play keyboards all that well, I like to use an arpeggiator or a sequencer. And let me give you a little demonstration of what that might sound like now. So I'll turn the arpeggiator on. And if I hold this note, it's just arpeggiating one note now and it's the home note. So it'll keep playing the same one. But if I go like this, goes up one and then down one. If I use these two, let's go back to home note. It's bigger interval. Now what's really cool is when you do something like this. So what I'm doing here is this is an interval of uh, plus two and plus three, and this one is minus one and minus three. So there's a weight if you want, if you sort of of going up. You can hear it working its way up the scale, and if you go the other way, it'll work its way down. And right there, it wrapped. You remember we talked about the wrap notes earlier, so it was it wraps around. So that's kind of cool. Um, what's really neat is when you incorporate the random note, uh, random interval, which is this one. So if you go something like, so I kind of like that. You can even double the last note by hitting the double. Let me hit the hold button here and try that again. That's kind of neat.
And if you have the home note inside there, you will go uh, random and then... Well, it's... Sorry. Okay, so I like to set my arpeggiator on order, which means the order that I hit it is the order that the interval will happen um, instead of going from the, from the low key to the high key. So it's kind of important and it's fun to play with about when you hit the random key, when you hit the double key, when you hit the home key. So if I go down, let's turn it on, turn off hold. If I go down and up and down and random and down and then repeat, I guess I can let go of all of them except one. Repeat, I fat fingered it. Let's try it again. So. Okay, and then repeat, and then random, and then up, and then home. Ah, what did I do? Ah, here we go, let's try it again. So random, interval, interval, repeat, home. So it kind of creates, when you use the, incorporate the home key, it'll always come back home, and it's fun to use the home key and the random key. Now I'm just using this in art mode. If I did it in sequence mode, then I can choose, I could choose when I wanted the home key to happen and when I wanted the um, random key to happen. So in a sequence, you can have the random key happen more than once, where in a pagiator, the way ARPs work don't let you push the same key more than once. So anyway, lots of fun. I hope you enjoyed the video and good luck with um, experimenting with the Noodler and the um, new interval algorithm.